employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers. There is additional sitting upstairs in the balcony. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of February 28th, 2019. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. <clears throat> Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Presente. Barron. Borelli. Brannan. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Present. Cornegie. Deutsch, Diaz, 
Drum. Espinal. Eugene. Here. Gibson. I'm here. Jonai. Grudenchik. Here. Holden. Kalos. Here. King. Ku. Person. Holden. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Lander. Here. Levin. <coughs> Levine. Here. Mizell. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Perkins. Here. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Valone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Williams. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Pastor Baylor Lee of the First Chinese Baptist Church, which is located at 21 Bell Street in Manhattan. Please rise. Let us bow down for prayer. We close our eyes in prayer so that our heart may see. First, our blind spots so that we may not stumble our limitations so that we may be humble, but not discouraged, our accomplishments so that we may have hope in our great potentials. We will call upon a power greater than ourselves. For some, the Holy One whom we worship in truth and spirit. For others, the forces of the universe and the very ground of our being. For still others, the memories of our ancestors and the heroes of our celebration, like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who laid down his life to help set his people and us free. Like Dr. Mabel Lee, who came to live and serve in Chinatown from 1900 to 1966. Keep our diverse communities from division and strives Inspire us by the example of our Latina con congresswoman, whose office is across from Mabel Place where she died, who sponsor HR 4463 to dedicate the Mabel Lee Memorial Post Office on 6 Doyer Street. We pray that the same spirit of reaching out across cultural and ethnic aisles will keep us in check the propensity of some leaders for hubris, as well as digital Goliath who seek to dominate. Resist them with little Davids from our communities. Yet our city does need these made in America giants. May they continue to seek to do good rather than to scheme to do harm, we pray. We close with Reverend Dr. King's inspiring words on faith to take the first step even when we don't see the whole staircase. His word on hope to accept finite disappointment such as the Queen's project, but never lose infinite hope. He urges us to stick with love because hate is too great a burden to carry. 
empower us with faith, hope, and love. With that prayer, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Lee, for your very inspirational prayer. I'd like to ask Council Member Chin to spread the invocation on record. Uh, thank you, Majority Leader. Quiet in the chamber. And thank you to Reverend Dr. Bayer, Bayer Lee. Born in Hong Kong, Reverend Dr. Bayer Jack Wally arrived in Flushing, Queens in 1962 alongside his grandmother. He spent his youth working in Chinatown before eventually pursuing a career in architecture. However, New York's financial crisis in the 1970s caused him to reassess his career path. In 1977, he decided to pursue the ministry. Ordained at the First Baptist Church of Flushing in 1986, Reverend Dr. Lee has served the first Chinese Baptist Church located in Chinatown since 2004. The First Chinese Baptist Church is an institution with deep historical significance for the Chinese American community of New York. Mabel Lee, uh, the trailblazing suffragette, led the church for 40 years throughout the church history. It has been a pillar in the community. During uh, his time at the First Chinese Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Lee has been a fierce and advocate on behalf of the Chinatown community, immigrants, and the poor. I thank Reverend Dr. Uh, Lee for gracing us with his invocation, and I make a motion uh, that the invocation be spread in full upon the record. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Chin. We will now have adoption of minutes. None. Message and papers from the mayor. Excuse me, M140, submitting David Burney for appointment to the Planning Commission. Rules, privileges, and elections. M141, preliminary mayor's management report. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M142 and M143. Coupled on a call-up vote, and at this time I would ask for a roll call vote on today's land use call-ups. Again, we are just voting right now on land use call-ups. Adams. Aye and all. Ampri Samuel. I vote aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. I vote aye. Borelli. Brannan. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. <coughs> Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Cornegy. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. I already did. <coughs> I'm going to pull it back. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Eugene. Uh, with permission, I'd like to vote in all lands that use collapse and couple item on the general uh, other calendar in all resolution. With that, I vote aye and all. Permission granted. Gibson. I vote aye. Grodenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Levin. Aye. Levine. Menchaca. Aye. Aye. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Rose. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. I vote aye on all land you call ups, and with permission, I would like to vote aye on all items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. Permission granted. Thank you. Torres. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Williams. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Borelli. Aye. Lander. Aye. Matteo. Aye. Combo. Aye. Speaker Johnson. Aye. 
Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative and zero negatives. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. If uh, folks could just be quiet for a moment, there's something important I want to say. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you all for being here with us on this Thursday. We have a busy agenda ahead of us. Before we get to that, I start every stated meeting, as previous speakers have, by acknowledging the 9-11 first responders who have passed away in the intervening weeks between our stated meetings. I do this because it's important that we acknowledge the bravery and the sacrifice shown by the women and men who served down at Ground Zero. Today, we are lucky, one day we are lucky, since our last stated meeting, to our knowledge, we haven't lost a survivor or a first responder. However, I am going to use this time today to stand with the 9-11 survivors who are still struggling with sickness that they developed at the pile and are now, once again, being forced to fight for their lives. After 9-11, we as a city made a promise to never forget. We did the right thing, and we stood by first responders who got sick because of their service. And now we're at a point, once again, sadly, where we need to renew that commitment. The 9-11 Victims Fund is running out of money, which means that very soon, checks sent to 9-11 survivors could be cut by up to 70%. There are people who are fighting to make sure that these survivors get the help that they need. I want to thank John Feel and John Stewart, who have been tireless advocates for 9-11 victims and for their families, as well as dozens of other people who were in D.C. this past weekend, pushing members of Congress to commit their support to fully fund the 9-11 Victims Fund. I know that our New York delegation, in a bipartisan manner, both Democrats and Republicans, are leading the fight on this. And I want to urge every member of Congress to follow the lead of our congressional delegation and to do right by the heroes who rushed into danger to protect others on 9-11 and went down to that pile day after day after the tragedy happened to ensure that New York could get back on its feet. So I really want to implore that the public please reach out, make sure that Congress knows that these victims and their families deserve this money and that this fund needs to be replenished immediately and no one's survivor benefit check should be cut by 70%. Tomorrow, March 1st, marks an important and sad anniversary I'd like to recognize. 25 years ago, 16-year-old Ari Halberstam, many of us know his amazing mother, Devorah, was targeted and brutally murdered by a gunman on the ramp to the Brooklyn Bridge. It was an act of terrorism, and we remember Ari. We all must stand against anti-Semitism and against bigotry. And sadly, we are seeing a rise, the rise of anti-Semitism across the world, across our country, and really sadly, right here in New York City. I stand with the Council's Jewish Caucus, united against anti-Semitism, united against hatred and bigotry in any form. Today is also a cause for celebration because it is, of course, Black History Month. In a time where hate seems to be on the rise, celebrating diversity in our city and our country is more important than ever. And Black History Month is a reminder of such an integral part of our nation's heritage. Last night, we had an amazing celebration here of African American culture in the council chambers. And I want to give a special shout out to our amazing colleague, Councilmember Adrienne Adams, who graced us with her mellifluous voice. Congratulations to Adrian. I also want to thank uh, Councilmember Miller, uh, who did a wonderful job uh, yesterday in preparing as co-chair of the Black Latino Asian Caucus 
and Councilman Rodriguez as well, who wasn't able to be here, but again, his leadership as co-chair of the BLAC. As everyone here knows, on Tuesday, New York City elected a new public advocate for the city of New York. And I want to give an enormous congratulations to my friend and colleague, our new public advocate elect, Jumani Williams. As everyone here likely knows, I've been the acting public advocate for the last two months. And in my thankfully very brief time as acting public advocate, I found the heart and soul of the office to be listening to New Yorkers and helping solve their problems. Uh, Jumani, I know you have always embodied the spirit of helping New Yorkers most in need. You have been a powerful, powerful voice here in the New York City Council over the last decade, and you used your powerful voice on Tuesday night when you spoke off the cuff, extemporaneously, in a raw, authentic, moving fashion at the end of your graceful and gracious acceptance speech, talking about your own personal struggles. And I am sure you will continue to use your powerful voice for the vulnerable and the marginalized, for the left behind, as you have always done. This city council will miss you. We will miss you. Even when you're a pain in the neck, we will miss you. But we all wish you the best of luck in your new role, and we know you're not going far. Uh, I also want to acknowledge uh, several council members who also ran for public advocate and ran great campaigns. I want to acknowledge Councilmember Adonis Rodriguez, and I want to acknowledge Councilmember Rafael Espinal, and I want to acknowledge, and I want to acknowledge Councilmember Eric Ulrich for their role. I want to congratulate them all on a race well run. And lastly, just on, on, on Jumani, I just want to, I just really want to say, though I'm sure many colleagues will have things to, to say about our great friend and colleague, Jumani Williams. Before I was elected to the city council in 2013, I knew who Jumani Williams was. And I knew who Jumani Williams was because of what he stood for. I knew who Jumani Williams was because even during his first term in the New York City Council, he was unafraid to take on the powers that be, whether they be the sitting speaker, whether they be the mayor, whether they be the governor, whether they be people in powerful positions. And to see Jumani so bravely and courageously use his voice time and again put his body on the line for the most vulnerable, for the marginalized, for other young men of color in New York City who look up to him as a role model. To do that con consistently and continuously on a day-to-day -day basis, to be someone whose words match up with their actions and their values, to be a formidable candidate who ran for speaker of this body in 2017 and in the aftermath was completely gracious and working with me on the things that are important to this council, to running for Lieutenant Governor that last year and spreading his message and his authenticity all across our great state, to passing over 50 bills during the last decade of his time during the council, to pushing for the Community Safety Act with Councilor Brad Lander at the height of stop, question, and frisk, which was tearing our city apart. Yes. And for also acknowledging that sometimes, as we all do, we could do a little better. That sometimes our words and actions 
may not have been what we wish they could have been at a moment in time, and acknowledging that and recognizing that and understanding that each one of us can do better. I admire Jumani Williams. Jumani Williams has been a great colleague, has been a great leader, mm -hmm. has been a great council member for his district, and will be a great public advocate for the city of New York. Congratulations, Jumani. Now we will dive into today's agenda. The council will vote on the following land use items. <clears throat> Excuse me, 460, <clears throat> 461 Alabama Avenue in Councilmember Inez Barron's district, East Village Housing in Councilmember Carlina Rivera's district, Caton Park Nursing Home in Councilmember Matthew Eugene's district, and 12 Franklin Street in Councilmember Steve Levin's district. The council will vote on the following four Article 11 property tax exemptions, 505 West 43rd Street in my council district, 241 West 111th Street in Councilmember Perkins' district, 316 East 91st Street in Councilmember Kalos' district, and 1010-1014 Ho Avenue in Councilmember Salamanca's district. Moving on, the council will be voting <clears throat> on the following legislation today. Introduction 979, sponsored by Councilmember Donovan Richards, would provide discretion to the Department of Housing Preservation and Development in choosing whether to enter into a regulatory agreement with a qualified community land trust. I know that Councilor Richards has worked on this for a very long time, and I want to congratulate him, and I want to thank the staff, Janine Zilka and Megan Chen, for working on this. Introduction 862, sponsored by Councilmember Paul Vallone, would amend the administrative code of the City of New York to allow the Department of Buildings to issue stop work orders whenever notice to revoke a work permit is issued. And again, I want to thank the staff, uh, Janine Zilka, Austin Bradford, and Megan Chen. We're going to vote on two bills sponsored by Councilmember Costa Constantinides, the chair of our Environmental Protection Committee. Introduction 425 would require DEP to submit a plan to prevent sewer backups, and that plan would be submitted to the mayor and the council and will be posted on the DEP website annually. I want to thank the staff who worked on this and the next bill I'm going to talk about, Samara Swanson, Nadia Johnson, and Jonathan Seltzer. Introduction 424, again by Chair Constantinides, would amend Title 24 of the Administrative Code of the City of New York by adding a new section to require the maintenance measures needed to assure that sewage backups occur no more frequently than 50 per 100 miles of sewer line. Next, introduction 268, sponsored by Councilman Richards, another bill today for him, would repeal a section of the administrative code in the city of New York and replace it with a new provision that would require the Department of Environmental Protection to report annually on the number of facilities estimated to require the installation of back flow prevention devices, the number of such facilities in which black flow prevention devices have already been installed, and the number of test reports filled with DEP in the preceding year, and the number of violations issued for failure to install a back flow prevention advice. And again, I want to thank Samara Swanson, Nadia Johnson, and Jonathan Seltzer for their work on that bill. Introduction 353, sponsored by Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, would require the Department of Buildings to provide a service whereby users of its website could sign up to receive email updates whenever a change in status is recorded on selected construction projects. And I want to thank Austin Bradford, uh, Branford, and Megan Chen for their work on that piece of legislation. Finally, we're going to vote on a package of three bills aimed at protecting workers in the private carting industry. Two of these introductions are prime sponsored by council member and chair of our sanitation committee, Antonio Reynoso. And the third is sponsored by council member Francisco Moya. The, the individuals employed in this industry work hard to perform essential services every single day and night under dangerous conditions. We need to make sure they are being treated fairly. I am committed to reforming the trade waste, trade waste industry to make it safer for employees and for the public, to support good unions who have workers' best interest in mind, and to reduce the environmental burden of trade waste truck traffic. I am excited and proud of the package of bills, and I look forward to continuing to work with Council Members Reynoso 
and Moya to improve the industry for everyone. The first bill, Introduction 1329, would mandate that the Business Integrity Commission establish standards for the registration of labor unions in the trade waste industry and authorize BIC to disqualify union agents or officers who have ties to organized crime. Introduction 1373, again by Chair Reynoso, would require the Business Integrity Commission to refer labor and wage violation cases involving private carters to the New York State Attorney General and the United States Department of Labor or other relevant city, and city state, and federal law enforcement agencies. And uh, Introduction 1368 uh, by Councilor Moya would require the Business Integrity Commission to provide information about workers' rights on their website and mandate that private carters registered by BIC provide information about workers' rights directly to their employees. I just want to say lastly on this, because uh, I don't want to gloss over these three bills, uh, Chair Reynoso has been really pounding the table and using his voice uh, as chair of this committee for the last five and a half years on reforming the uh, private waste industry. And he has stood with these workers time and again, as has Councilman Ramoya, in ensuring they be protected. Much of this, though not all of it, came out of some amazing reporting by Kira Feldman at ProPublica, looking at uh, issues in the sanitation industry across New York City. And I really want to thank uh, Chair Reynoso for his incredible leadership, his innovation, and for working with advocates to really get this done. This is very, very important. It doesn't uh, grab a lot of headlines, though it did grab a lot of investigative reporting because of how broken the industry is. And today is a big day for him. He's worked on this issue for years and years and years. And though uh, people may not be rallying outside on this today, uh, the, he has been at many rallies over the last many months pushing to get this done and working to get this done to protect some of those vulnerable New Yorkers who put their lives on the line every single day. So I want to congratulate you, Antonio, for these bills, and I will congratulate uh, Francisco for also working on this as well. And with that, Madam Majority Leader, that concludes our agenda for today. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. We will now move to discussion of general orders, and we'll begin with Council Member Vallone. Thank you, Speaker Johnson, Majority Leader Combo. Today, I am proud to speak on intro 862. Too often we are left to watch construction sites continue their destructive or illegal work, even after a building department inspector has visited the site. Issuing additional violations or a notice to revoke the existing permits is simply not enough. Current practice allows unscrupulous developers and builders to simply continue their destructive or illegal work for weeks, even after these measures are used. Today's bill will close that loophole and allow inspectors, when warranted, to issue an immediate stop work order. Whether it is a residential or commercial site, we will now be able to promote safety at construction sites and ensure that all work immediately ceases when there is clear evidence that violations of our building codes are occurring. Our offices are often overwhelmed with requests from residents seeking immediate help, often at the beginning of a new proposed construction site. Unfortunately, the bad apples will rush to finish or continue work without regard to existing violations, even with the existing notice to revoke in place. Valid concerns and clear evidence should be more than enough to warrant a stop work order, especially when a property owner or contractor has a history of violations. This bill codifies into law and gives the Department of Buildings the tools they need to combat reckless developers and the blatant disregard of construction permit requirements. Once written into law, this bill will allow homeowner associations and community groups another instrument to utilize in an effort to protect their neighborhood from the bad actors. Thank you everyone for making this possible, including Jason Goldman, Laura Popa, Janan Zilka, Austin Bradford, my staff, and our speaker for their efforts in bringing this bill to the floor for a vote today. I urge all my colleagues to vote aye. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Council Member Vallone. And next speaker will be Speaker Constantinides to speak on issues related to the agenda. Thank you, uh, Madam Majority Leader, uh, and thank you, uh, Speaker Johnson, for your leadership. Uh, today, I ask my colleagues to support intro 424 and 425A. In August of 2016, the EPA found that DEP experienced an excessive number of sewage backups, uh, more than 17,000 between 2011 and 2015. And there were also numerous instances of repeat backups in the same locations, many due to capacity issues or infrastructure maintenance. Sewage contain all sorts of biological and uh, hazards and diseases that I will not name here 
um, but it are hazardous to our communities. And these are going into people's homes and basements and businesses almost on a consistent basis. Uh, in 2016, due to a significant number of confirmed and unconfirmed backups, EPA entered an administrative compliance order uh, based on these, these backups. Uh, these bills, intro 424A, would require the DEP commissioner to ensure that where a sewer segment is causing a confirmed back misidentified, that segment is inspected and cleaned as necessary within 10 calendar days. Intro 425A would require the DEP to prepare a plan to prevent sewer backups, to reduce sewer backups, and to target recurring backups. The proposed local law also requires DEP to review the root control strategies of other municipalities and following the review, consider recommending root control strategies for private property. This law would take effect in 90 days. I want to thank the staff who worked on it uh, and the EP committee, Samara Swanston, uh, Nadia Johnson, uh, Ricky uh, Chawla, uh, Jonathan Seltzer, and my staff, uh, Nick Wazowski, Terrence Cullen, uh, Nick Rolson. Thank you very much. Thank you for those very important bills that you've put forward. We'll now have Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you. Just want to call my colleagues' attention to the land use bill that cites 461 Alabama Avenue. As you know, I have the same mantra over and over. We've got to build housing affordable, particularly to the people who live in the community where the housing is being built. This is a project that is supportive housing, and the other 20% of the units that will be built uh, will be affordable to people at 60% of the AMI and below. And the developer is a black developer. So I really got all that I think is uh, significant for my community, and I urge all of my colleagues to vote in the affirmative on this bill. Thank you. Is there anyone else that cares to speak on the record at this time? Councilmember Donovan Richards. Sure, thank you, uh, Majority Leader. I'm gonna speak on my bill intro 268, requiring reporting on the installations of backflow prevention devices. And while I know preventing backflow doesn't sound like the sexiest topic, uh, we're gonna put sexy back into backflow devices today. Uh, preventing the contamination of potable drinking water is a serious issue that must not be taken lightly and is critical to preserving and managing our city's water supply. Backflow prevention devices prevent contaminated water or chemicals from flowing back into the drinking water supply if there is an unexpected change in water pressure. The Department of Environmental Protection is charged with preventing this contamination before it occurs by ensuring city businesses comply with city and state codes. If a property is required to install a device, they must be installed on all water service lines to the property. Should the building owner fail to comply with the directive of the DEP commissioner, he or she is subject to enforcement actions such as cease and desist orders, civil or criminal enforcement actions, fines or penalties, and even ultimately termination of the water supply to the building or any portion of the facility. This local law will require DEP to submit an annual report to the mayor and council on the number of backflow devices needed, installed, tested, and the number of violations issued for failure to install a backflow device. We as a city must be mindful of keeping our dr wa drinking water clean and remember that Potable water is not a bottomless commodity that should be spoiled away. Every New Yorker has an important role to play here. Um, lastly, I just wanted to touch on intro uh, 979, which is on community land trust, which is going to be the new frontier in affordable housing in our community, but affordable home ownership. Uh, and I think we have to be mindful as a city as we talk about rentals um, and we look at the, the decline and ownership, home ownership opportunities for people of color, young people of color in the city, that we have a responsibility to keep this at the cusp of affordable housing conversations as well. So with that, I'm asking all my colleagues to vote aye and wanna thank all the staff and the speaker for working on these bills. Thank you, I vote aye. Thank you, Council Member Richards. And finally, we have Council Member Reynoso. Thank you. Uh, as this body has heard me state Many times before, the private sanitation industry operates without regard for the health and safety of its workers or the city at large. 
routes are inefficient, safety standards are poor, and environmentally sustainable practices are non-existent in many of these companies. However, it is the treatment of workers, many of whom are immigrants and formerly incarcerated individuals, some of those most vulnerable members of our society, that I find most tragic. In many of these shops, it is the very unions that are supposed to represent and protect these workers who are aiding and abetting their mistreatment. These are not unions like the Teamsters, TC37, or 1199, organizations that have a long history fighting for their members and delivering meaningful benefits to workers. What we are talking about today are sham unions, organizations that are in collusion with company ownership to prevent legitimate unions from organizing workers and ensure these workers never receive meaningful benefits and protections from their employers. Sham unions have been used as a vehicle for organized crime to retain a foothold within the carding industry. BIC's oversight authority only extends to companies themselves, not the officers of these sham unions. One of my pieces of legislation, intro 1329, will expand BIC's authority, giving them the necessary tools to investigate union officers within the commercial waste industry. We will also be passing two other bills, sponsored by myself and Councilmember Moya, that will further codify BIC's oversight and workers' rights to unionize, to organize. I want to thank the Teamsters for first bringing the existence of sham unions to my attention, the great Kira Feldman from ProPublica for her reporting on the connections these unions have to organized crime, and also want to thank the Transform Don't Trash Coalition for their continued efforts to fight for reform. And finally, I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson for his unwavering commitment to ensure that the status quo in the private carding industry becomes a thing of the past. And I also want to thank Nadia Johnson, Jonathan Seltzer, and Nicole Bean for all of the great work they've done in this committee. Um, and I encourage all my colleagues to vote aye on these important bills. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Councilmember Reynoso. And we will now move into report of special committees. None. <clears throat> Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Environmental Protection intros 268A, 424A, and 425A, backflow prevention and sewer system backups. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, preconsidered Reso 763, transparency Reso. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 352 and Reso 768 through LU 355 and Reso 771 tax exemptions. Coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 353B and 862A, Construction Projects and Stop Work Orders. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 979, Community Land Trusts. Coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, Resolution 621, Burst Service Franchise. Coupled to be filed pursuant uh, to letter of withdrawal. Excuse me, LU 326 and Reso 772 through LU 328 and Reso 774, 461 Alabama Avenue. Couple of general orders. LU 329 and Reso 775, East Village Housing. Couple of general orders. LU 333 and Reso 776 and LU 334 and Reso 777, Caton Park. Couple of general orders. LU 338 and Reso 778 through LU 340 and Reso 780, 12 Franklin Street. Couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Sanitation and Solid Waste Management, intros 1329A, 1368A, and 1373A, private carding. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, intro 720, site safety training. Laid over. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Couple of general orders, and at this time, I'm asking for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Adams. I vote aye on all. Ampri Samuel. I on all. Ayala. I on all. Barron. I vote I on all. Borelli. I on all. Brannon. I on all. Cabrera. I. Chin. I on all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Carnegie. Aye. Deutsch. Permission to say a few words? Permission granted. Thank you. Firstly, I, I want to uh, congratulate uh, Jemani Williams um, on his uh, election. And also, I would like to congratulate and, uh, our majority leader, because you are the first member who actually presided over the council for three public advocates. And I vote aye and all. Thank you. Diaz. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Uh, with congratulations to all my colleagues, I vote aye. Gibson. Permission to briefly explain my vote? 
Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I want to congratulate all of my colleagues who are passing important legislation today and certainly want to join the speaker and all of my colleagues in congratulating Jamani Williams on his election. Um, as a member of this body for the past five plus years, it's been an honor and a privilege working side by side with Jamani, particularly on issues of criminal justice reform and summer youth employment and making sure we continue to lift up the voices of young people, the first ever creation of the mayor's office to prevent gun violence, along with you, Madam Majority Leader, as well as the New York City Crisis Management System and all of the cure of violence work we've done through the years. We're not done yet, and I know that only the best is yet to come with Jamani at the helm of being our new public advocate. So I just want to join all of our colleagues in just celebrating this incredible season. He's been elected for a time such as this, and I am truly grateful to call him my friend, my colleague, and I want to wish him and his entire staff all the very best. Congratulations, Jamani Williams, and I proudly vote aye on all of today's agenda items. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Gibson. Gordanchik. A brief permission to talk. Permission granted. I don't want to explain my vote. First, um, I want to thank, I usually don't ask permission to talk, but today I do. I want to thank Speaker Johnson for his passionate um, remarks on 9-11 benefits. And uh, remember my dear friend Mike Samanowitz, uh, the assemblyman who was at the pile on several occasions as a member of the 107 Precinct Auxiliary. He was a commander of that before he became an elected official, and his life was certainly cut short because of that. Uh, today, uh, we launched our Playfair for Parks campaign. I want to thank my 39 colleagues who have signed on to that, and the rest of you, I'm coming after you. And today, before I vote aye, which I do, I remember my parents, Blanche and Nathan, who were married this day 67 years ago in the Bronx County Courthouse. Yes, they eloped. They did elope, but they were married 15 days later by the rabbi um, to make it all, so to speak, kosher. Um, with that, I vote aye, and I thank you for indulging me, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. Thank you. Holden. Aye on all. Kalos. Permission to uh, talk about Jamani? <laughs> permission granted, and just to let us know, we can also hold our celebratory remarks to general discussion as well. But I'm certainly eager to hear your comments at this time, Councilmember Kalos. Uh, thank you. I want to start by thanking this body for passing Local Law 1 of 2019 that extended November's campaign finance rule to the public advocates race. And I wanted to congratulate Jamani Williams for making history on Tuesday as the first citywide candidate to win an election with no real estate money. And, and uh, like the speaker, uh, I, I knew uh, Jamani before I even ran for office, mostly because I kept seeing him on TV getting arrested. And uh, he, he, he was well known for the Community Safety Act. I joined the Progressive Caucus in part because of Jamani Williams and how much I looked up to him. I, I, I can be a little bit aggressive at times and Jamani has always tolerated that. I believe I followed him around all of last term saying we need to sign a motion to discharge on the Right to Know Act and uh, it was an honor to actually get to sign that with him and get it passed last term. Uh, you've already gotten so much done, and there's so much more to do. Uh, let's go. I vote aye and all. Thank you. Mario. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Excuse to explain my vote. Permission I, granted. I just want to congratulate you, Monty. Job well done. And I vote aye. Thank you. Lansman. Lander. Permission to refrain from saying anything more about Jumani? <laughs> <laughs> Permission granted. I vote aye. Levin. With deep, heartfelt congratulations to Jumani Williams on being elected our next public advocate. Congratulations, Jumani. Um, I vote aye on all. Levine. Did what Levin said. That's an aye. And Menchaca. you vote how? Okay. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. 
Um, I want to say thank you to uh, Chair of the Sanitation Committee, Councilmember Antonio Reynoso, for now in the second term of his career, uh, finally passed this incredible package and really with the work of the workers on the ground, with the Teamsters, with all of our support, was able to do something that really, really felt impossible on the ground. Um, and while there have been uh, casualties that have been felt on the ground, uh, this is going to really, really bring justice to workers and remove the sham unions um, that should not have any place uh, in our city. So I want to say thank you to him and, and Councilmember Moya as well, who had one of the uh, bills in the package. Uh, and with that, I'll say aye on all and get on to the general discussions to both talk about Jumani and uh, a bill that I'm reintroducing. Uh, you are on the list. Thank you. Miller. I vote aye on all, uh, with the exception of 1329, abstain. Moya. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, I just want to say that a, a union job is supposed to be a thing of pride. And when you go to work knowing your union leaders are safeguarding you against a greedy and abusive employer, uh, it's, often, it's, too, it's too often that unions uh, established for private uh, carding companies will pick up most of the city's commercial waste are themselves frauds, abusing the very workers uh, they are here to uh, protect. Uh, these sham unions are nothing more than Trojan horses, and many of them dispatched to do the bidding of and provide cover for shady employees, employers. Uh, workers' rights are not a luxury. They're fundamental, and they belong to every man and woman punching in for an honest day's work. Unfortunately, for private sanitation employees, their industry is littered with companies that consider workers' rights open for dispute. Some see it as something uh, to be subverted entirely. But let's be clear, employers who see their employees this way are nothing more than parasites leeching off of their labor. Basic worker rights are the foundation upon which all an empowered working class and a robust middle class is built. The continuous workers' rights abuse of the private carding employees are a matter of public record. So widely reported, it appears almost an endemic to the industry. This bill will take the necessary steps to uh, empowering workers to protect them from greedy employers and these sham unions. I want to take this opportunity to thank the chair, and I want to thank the speaker, and thank my colleagues who are voting uh, to support these workers today and affirming this body's commitment to protecting working class New Yorkers. Uh, thank you. Uh, I will be voting aye uh, and will be abstaining on uh, intro 1329. Thank you. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Uh, I, I on all, and I, I want to reflect what uh, Councilmember Moya said and thank both him and Councilmember Reynoso for their bills here today, and a big congratulations to Councilmember Williams. Uh, I should say Public Advocate Williams as well. Thank you. Reynoso. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I just want to, again, thank Councilmember Johnson. Uh, for a long time in the sanitation, as chair of sanitation, I felt like I was on an island fighting by myself to bring justice to workers, to bring justice to um, uh, businesses uh, against the, a lot of these bad players in this industry. I truly felt alone. And uh, as soon as he got elected in less than a year, uh, we've seen the changes we've been able to accomplish. And I really thank you for uh, putting yourself in the front lines of this, saying that you're gonna stand up and fight for this and actually following through um, is, is something that I think has changed the game when it comes to the private sanitation industry, and it's uh, a lot has to do with your leadership. So I want to thank you again for having my back, um, and I want to vote aye on all. Thank you. Richards. I vote aye, and I just wanted to thank Chair Casa Consumsanides and also Samara Swanson uh, for their work on uh, the bills as well. Thank you. I vote aye. Rivera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Just wanted to shout out a couple of constituents. Uh, first, I'm going to start with Jack Brown, who, because of his issues in the district, I am introducing a piece of legislation around ventilation and HVAC systems. 
But more importantly, we are passing East Village housing today, and there are tenants from that building. This is the building in which they have not been able to have, be inside their own buildings in their own homes for many years. Not only will this create a brand new building that is ADA compliant, but it will really just right this kind of injustice of, of, of instability for so many. So I want to give a shout out. I know 204 Avenue A tenants are in the balcony. So thank you for being here and thank you for your years of fighting. And with that, I vote aye on all. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Congratulations, public advocate William. Someone with whom I've been going through a lot of struggle together, fighting together, arrested together. So even though we were there in the field, going through many debates, but I know that New York City won one of the finest public advocates that we have ever had. So congratulations. With that, I vote aye. Rose. Permission to congratulate Jamani? Permission granted. Thank you. Congratulations, Jamani. And I want to thank you for being your authentic self because New Yorkers are the beneficiaries of that. And um, I just want to give you this hashtag. Hashtag, you were born to be public advocate. And with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Rosenthal. Hashtag, Jamani Williams was born to be public advocate. I'd like to vote aye on that and vote aye on everything else. Thank you very much. Thank you. Torres. I vote aye on all. So. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. So I want to first congratulate my colleagues on, and the speaker on, on what, uh, all their bills today. And I want to uh, also congratulate um, public advocate uh, Jamani Williams. I believe that the turning point in his campaign was when he received the endorsement of the outstanding Patricia Williams, his awesome mom, uh, who, yes, <laughs> that's right. Uh, that, that sealed it for me. Uh, so I want to congratulate my colleague. And I encourage the public to watch the final minutes of, of his remarks, of, of his victory speech. Some of the most powerful remarks I've ever heard uh, in, in a forum. Uh, Jamani, you certainly were, were, were born for this role. We are all fortunate uh, that you will be a ferocious status quo disruptor as public advocate. Congratulations. I vote aye on all. Ulrich. I vote aye on all and also want to congratulate again my friend and colleague Jamani Williams on his tremendous win. He really earned it. He was out there in every borough and every community. And I look forward to working closely with him to drive Mayor de Blasio crazy. So congratulations and I vote aye on all. Valone. Aye on all. And we're going to have to get used to not saying Madam Advocate anymore. But we can proudly call Jamani our new public advocate. Well done, my brother. You've been there for all of us, and now you're going to be there for the whole city. Aye on all. Van Bramer. Permission to briefly explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to uh, congratulate all of the uh, candidates for public advocate, including uh, my good friend Eric Ulrich, who uh, did a terrific job and who continues to make us laugh every day uh, that he serves here. But I do want to say to Jumani, um, uh, you know, there have been, in the almost 10 years that we've served together, uh, a number of incredible moments that uh, I will always remember. And uh, for those who were here in the chamber when we voted to uh, uh, end stop question and frisk as we know it, that vote took place somewhere around 1 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the morning, I can't remember. Um, but it was an empowering and em <laughs> really, really powerful uh, night and morning and journey and Jumani uh, and Councilmember Lander led the way and it was amazing. And after the death of Trayvon Martin, uh, there was a, a lot of activism here at City Hall and uh, I'll always remember Jumani um, uh, marching with us onto Broadway uh, and uh, seeing him uh, read the names of other uh, uh, black men who had been killed uh, and crying uh, as he did so. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to imagine uh, this body without Jumani because uh, uh, every day that I've been here, he's been here, um, and uh, his voice has always been heard. Obviously, he's moving up and on, and that voice will be louder uh, than ever uh, uh, for justice for all. Uh, and I just want to thank him and congratulate him 
Uh, and indeed, as Councilmember Traeger said, the last uh, couple of minutes of Jumani's speech were uh, as authentic and as deeply moving uh, as any, uh, as I've heard from an elected official, particularly on the stage that he was at that particular moment in time. And I shared with him a message from a very dear friend of mine, a black gay man from Montserrat. Uh, Jumani is doing amazing things, more than he even knows, I think. But uh, Jumani, you will be missed. Congratulations. Williams. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, before Council Member Public Advocate like Williams, I would like to waive the time and allow him to speak for as long as he would like. Thank you. Uh-oh. <laughs> We're not going to be here all night, though, Jumani. Uh -huh. May I excuse me my vote, please? Permission granted. Oh, boy. All right. I'm going to try to get through this. So the fact of the matter is uh, we didn't realize this was my last stated until we were about to come over. So try to put some things together. I apologize uh, if I don't thank the folks I'm supposed to thank. So uh, thank you to the speaker. Thank you to uh, Public Advocate who was here before. And of course, the Majority Leader. Thank you to my colleagues who ran, uh, Council Members Espinal, Rodriguez, and Ulrich. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to be a farewell speech, because I'll just be switching re seats for a few times. So I'll still be around. <laughs> But I've, I've gathered here for, uh, I'm very uncomfortable right now, by the way. Um, I've gathered here for over 200 stated meetings. Uh, years ago when I decided to run for city council, it was really so that uh, I could um, try to make transformational change uh, as an elected official. I really wanted to try to be a different kind of elected official um, than many of the elected officials I had seen. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to not have the system change me. I wanted to try my best to change the system. Uh, and now I just want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you for uh, working with me on so many of the issues that we got done and would not have been able to do it without my colleagues. And on this floor, we've done so many awesome things. It is, it's just amazing. And when I first became an elected official from a community organizer, people asked me what was the big difference. And I said, well, the big difference is people want to hear what I got to say right now. <laughs> that was a, that was an amazing change. Uh, in the bottom, we fought back against a billionaire mayor and a powerful police commissioner in passing the Community Safety Act, where people began to, uh, I guess, know who I was. We did a lot of work, myself and Councilman Melander. Uh, believe it or not, it is, when people ask me what is my most proudest moment, I usually mention that because people know it, but um, I'm proud of so many others that helped, I think, change the barriers that, that people had. Uh, whether it was Ban the Box, um, whether I worked on with Borough President Brewer or the summer youth jobs that I worked on with people like uh, Council Member Rose. The thing I'm actually most proud of is what this body did around gun violence. Um, the work that we did to change what people thought was public safety and how to address the issues of gun violence. I see you, Rob, over there. I'm not going to cry, by the way. I know I see your face waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> to change the discussion of um, how people were dealing with young black and brown people in this city and understanding that they, they weren't animals, they were human beings, they were young people who were going through issues and if you address those issues we would see a decline in, uh, in the violence that we didn't have to stop more young black men to actually live in the city of New York and this body took a chance, it was the only uh, I worked uh, the task force with Councilmember Cabrera. It was the only new initiative that was funded uh, during the recession. We had a pilot program of $5 million. I think we're up to about $40 million now. I uh, worked with Councilman Gibson and Majority Leader Cumbo. Now we have the Office of Gun Violence Prevention along with the Crisis Management System. And gun violence and murders are at historic lows, more than when we were stopping those young black <laughs> So. This body should be immensely proud for what it did, and I hope others across the country are looking. You know, if I can go back and speak to myself six years ago when I, when I lost my dad, 20 years ago as a tenant organizer, or 20 years, six years ago, <laughs> as a young kid struggling to get through school, most people saw a troublemaker. And that's actually who I was trying to speak to when I spoke that night, because it was important to let the folks know
to just hold on. Just hold on. You can get through it. And it's okay. And And uh, and to let them know something that took me far too long to figure out that it's okay to talk about and that more than likely you are not going through what you're going through by yourself. There are so many people going through it as well. For the last nine years, it's just been an honor and a privilege uh, to sit here. Uh, wherever I was sitting, I still get excited going up those steps to be a member of the city council every single time I walk up. Uh, I thank the speaker uh, because, uh, you know, for the time I've been here while you were speaker, I feel like this body actually found its voice in being a co-equal branch of government and holding this mayor accountable. And I only ask that you keep that going. Uh, it's been amazing. Since we didn't plan this out, I don't want to call too many thank yous. So I'm just going to thank my staff. I understand my mom is watching somewhere in my office. And so, <laughs> shout out to my mom, Patricia Williams, who has threatened to run against me a few times. <laughs> and she, I heard someone call her the Mariana Rivera of politics. And a shout out to Miss Jeannie Ned, my fifth grade teacher. I finally understood why she has meant so much to me for all these years. Uh, when everybody saw a troublemaker, she saw a young man. And she gave that young man the attention she needed. Uh, he needed. Uh, our teachers are not babysitters. They are, they, are, they are instrumental in forming minds uh, in our schools. And we should start treating them as the professionals that they are. Uh, I've always. I've always tried to live by the motto, do all that you can with what you have, where you are, for as many people as possible. We've done a lot of good. Let's keep going. As the next public advocate, I'm excited to continue to do the people's work alongside everyone here, maybe in a different way, with a new view, uh, but the same passion and dedication to the people. I'm going to end with a quote from Marcus Garvey. Look for the whirlwind. I'll be there. Thank you so much. And how do you vote, Council Member Williams? Uh, <laughs> Put him on the clock. <laughs> uh, with, uh, standing on land use number 333 and 334, with uh, eye on all the rest. Thank you. You've kept it consistent. <laughs> Jaeger. Aye. Combo. I respectfully vote aye. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of intro 1329A, which was adopted by a vote of 46 affirmative, zero negative, and two abstentions. And LUs 333 and 334, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention. The revised land use call-up vote is 48 affirmative and zero negative.
We will now have the introduction and the reading of bills. Madam Majority Leader, all bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. We will now move into the discussion of resolutions. Are there any members who wish to speak on any of today's resolutions? Seeing none, I will now read today's resolutions into the record. Members who wish to vote against or abstain on any of these resolutions should register your vote with the clerk at the dais. Resolution 509, resolution calling on the United States Army Corps of Engineers to consider the proposals made in New York, New Jersey Harbor and, tr and Tributaries Coastal Storm Risk Management Feasibility Study pursuant to the National Environment Policy Act to consider sea rise in addition to storm surge. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstentions. The ayes have it. We will now move into general discussion. And if you did not have an opportunity to wish your congratulations on to Council Member Jamani Williams. You, you can do it privately. <laughs> <laughs> and we will begin with Council Member Cornegie. Structural racism ensnares Senegalese twists, Bantu knots, Fulani braids, and all natural hair and natural hairstyles. Precisely because structural racism has many component parts, including demeaning the very personhood of black and brown people, our strategies to dismantle structural racism must be wide ranging. Often under the guise of unprofessionalism, natural hair has been cited as an excuse for mistreatment, abuse, and discrimination. New York City's Commission on Human Rights chose to combat this discrimination by issuing legal guidance against race discrimination on the basis of hair. This legal guidance says we take seriously the painful experience of disrespect and discrimination too many New Yorkers with natural hairstyles have faced. Upholding New York City's human rights law uplifts all diverse communities and ensures everyone has an opportunity to fulfill, fully participate in the life of our city. This legal guidance puts schools, employers, and public accommodations on notice that they should not mistreat, abuse, or discriminate against individuals who have natural hair and hairstyles. Our human rights law shines a light on discrimination that the broader society responds to with an apathetic shrug. What was ignorant, cabined as an isolated incident, or unacknowledged altogether receives due attention. The human rights lens says that your individual experience has worth, and we need to match your lived experience with our respecting the human rights dignity of each individual. Vary valuing human rights means no less. So for some of us who wear our hair naturally, and who have been told that they want to advance in not only this industry, but industries in corporate America, in education. Um, it's great to see the uh, Commission on Human Rights standing up for those of us who've decided that it has a spiritual context or a cultural context and are able to wear our hair with pride, knowing that there's a law that protects us from discrimination. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now have Council Members Ku, followed by Barron, and then finally Menchaca. I rise today to ask my colleagues to sign on a package of bills co-primed by myself and Councilmember Miller and supported by many of you here today. Intro 1455 would require the past department to notify homeowners of their rating on the trees and sidewalks program. For many homeowners, the trees and sidewalk program started off as a way to protect homeowners from damage caused by the city-owned trees. However, as trees have grown, so have the problems. Now homeowners are enrolled into the program by the city, but many wait 10 years for the city to come fix their sidewalk. My bill would notify homeowners of their overall sidewalk rating and whether they should wait for the city to repair the sidewalk or repair it themselves. In conjunction with Councilmember Miller's bill, this package of bills will protect our city's homeowners and the trees. I ask you to sign on. <coughs> I ask you to join all of us to sign to sign on uh, in the uh, intro 1435 today. And of course, I want to congratulate uh, Councilmember Germani Williams for his. Uh, Election is public advocate, uh, and I think his 
political potential is unlimited. So congratulations. Thank you, Councilmember Koo. Now Councilmember Barron, and followed by Councilmember Manchaka. Uh, thank you. I don't know how many people saw the cover of the front page of the Daily News for Tuesday's edition, but it was very disturbing. Talked about Professor Joe Wilson, who had been a staff member, had been a professor in CUNY, and it talked about his research that he had conducted over 30 years and the fact that it had been trashed. Dr. Martin Luther King said, the tendency to ignore the Negro's contribution in American life and to strip him of his personhood is as old as the earliest history books and as contemporary as the morning newspaper. And I think that that story that ran in there uh, on that day talked about exactly that. For CUNY to have, without uh, notice, come in and searched and seized all of the research and the work that Professor Wilson had done, not chronicle the documents that they took, not have a chain of custody to indicate where those papers were, is unacceptable. I believe one of the alum of the program that Dr. Wilson uh, ran is going to be our next public advocate, public advocate elect, is a, is a product of that program. So certainly it was a worthy program. And Professor Wilson's documents included notes, photos, correspondence, transcripts, and research that had been conducted with organization, organizations such as the Brotherhood of Sleeping, Porter, Sleeping Car Porters, an interview with Ray Charles, a letter from Dr. Martin Luther King, and other irreplaceable documents. I'm calling on CUNY to rectify the situation, although Dr. Wilson now has a lawsuit, so we will get, uh, we will get a resolution of that. But I would say it's similar to what CUNY did with the Shakur Morales Center at City College, where they came in then and took the documents of the black organization, which they still have not received. And I'm calling on CUNY to show that they value African American history, not just give lip service and not just say we're trying to do better. I wouldn't want to come to CUNY as a professor knowing that this is the behavior that they engage in, but yet they continue to talk about they can't attract black faculty. Maybe this is why. Thank you. Thank you. We will now have Councilmember Menchaca. Uh, thank you. And I want to start with my thank you to uh, public advocate elect. Jamani Williams, I'm gonna miss you, buddy, brother, hermano. Uh, many times when we, I think we're both on the same page, we reached out to each other and said, how are, how are we voting on this? And it was a we because there was a shared sense of values. Um, whether it was a land use item or a controversial moment in the council where the right voices needed to come out, we joined forces. One that I haven't um, yet heard but I wanna lift is the construction safety for all. I remember um, working with you on that every step of the way, and you invited me as a co-prime sponsor with open arms and really sharing that burden. Um, and really it wasn't a burden, it was a offer to join forces and bring the advocates and bring all sectors, the MWBEs, the unions, the workers, and letting the workers be at the front end, including our immigrant workers, our day laborers. And you never ever hesitated and you brought me in as a partner. That is the spirit that I think is gonna carry you forward into this position as public advocate, and you have me as your partner here and forever. Um, keep us accountable. Keep us accountable. Uh, and I can't wait to do that work with you. Um, I'm gonna keep you accountable though, uh, and there's a bill that I'm introducing that I hope you'd love to co-sponsor as public advocate, um, and that's essentially 1457. This is something that everybody knows, it's called the LPI law, the uh, leading pedestrian interval, that I wanna actually change and call it the leading pedestrian and bicycle interval, because this is essentially what allow for bicycles to use the LPI at intersections to cross safely. Uh, despite the incredible success of Vision Zero, uh, we still use uh, language that brings bicycles and motor vehicles as the same thing. Today, the administration uses and reacts to delivery workers 
deaths by cracking down on bice bicycles. It's not at the vulnerable conditions that lead delivery workers to use e-bikes. Um, it's poverty, income inequality. This bill will help us move that forward. Thank you so much, and I hope you can get on 1457. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Manchaka. And I just want to close with uh, the 35th Council District is so proud to celebrate its very own Spike Lee on his first Oscar win. His film Black KKK Klansman won Best Adapted Screenplay, and the night was historic for many. There were a total of seven black artists who took home awards in seven different categories on Oscar Sunday during Black History Month. Regina King, Mashallah Ali, Peter Ramsey, Spike Lee, Ruth Carter, Hannah Beachler, Kevin Wilmot, and all took home awards, an unprecedented number of awards for black artists. Women also roared at the 91st Academy Awards, picking up a record-breaking 15 trophies, the most ever in Oscar history. The Oscars are changing, period, end of sentence. A movie about menstruation won an Oscar this year. This particular production sheds light on menstrual equality and access to period products, particularly in parts of the world where access to affordable menstrual products is scarce. When I think about the magnitude of the winds, it brings me back to Black Panther, a superhero adventure that transcended the gender, the genre, to become a favorite film by so many, winning a total of three Oscars. Finally, we were pleased to see a handful of incredible people to join the Oscar night as presenters, including Serena Williams, Congressmember John Lewis, Tyler Perry, Queen Latifah, and others. For the first time, there was an effort in Oscar his history recognizing what we all knew, and that was that God distributes talent and creativity equally amongst all cultures, and that we all have a very valuable story to share. And I just also want to join with all of my colleagues in congratulating our new public advocate elect. Our new public advocate elect is a very good friend of mine, and I'm so proud of you. This is such an incredible moment. Your family coming from Grenada, you growing up in the Flatbush section of community, going to Brooklyn Technical High School, going to Brooklyn College, becoming our city council member and now public advocate elect is a story that so many little black boys are going to find inspiration in when they know that someone named Jamani, who's from Flatbush, who went to the schools in the neighborhood, who still lives on the block, who still looks like, walks like, and dresses just like them, is going to be a story that they are going to find inspiration in. And we are going to see the results of that in the upcoming years. I just want to add, as a, in a time when uh, relationships and dynamics between colleagues continues to break down and respect for one another continues to break down, you showed what First Lady Obama has always said, when they go low, you go so very high. And I applaud you for the way you conducted yourself during a campaign where some individuals feel that they must attack others just to win a race. But you show that if you stick to your work, if you let the work that you have done speak for yourself, that you will be victorious. And I think that you've led and shown in so many ways that that's the way to run a campaign. And as you now, as the public advocate, I'm going to be so happy because your presence in my district will now make sense. So <laughs> So I'm so pleased to welcome you to the 35th District. You're always welcome and will be greeted with a smile. I love you. I'm proud of you. You have done our community proud. We salute you. Public Advocate Jamani Williams. <laughs> Speaker Corey Johnson will close us out. I want to let uh, folks know that <clears throat> uh, Madam Majority Leader, I've been really proud of you the last few months in chairing these hearings and doing an excellent job in running the stated meetings. We look forward to you continuing that role with Public Advocate-Elect Williams filling in every now and then as you guys work out the schedule, but you've done an excellent job and I look forward to continuing to see you up there in the place that Tish James sat and the place that Jumani Williams will sit uh, every now and again. And the stated meeting- Every now meeting, and again, yes. And the stated meeting of February 28th, 2019 is hereby adjourned. Thank you. There's a guy.